Welcome back to another episode of Season 5 of the RAG Podcast. As you guys know by now, this is the number one podcast across the recruitment sector globally. And we've always been on a mission to help recruitment agencies grow by interviewing founders and telling their stories of success from startup all the way to scale up and exit. Well, this season we're a little bit different. How do you as a recruitment leader and founder maintain your family and friendships whilst being the best person at work? How do you stay physically fit mentally and emotionally? And how do you find time for yourself in the madness? How do you find time for self-interest, for hobbies and self-improvement? Well, to help you with this, I'm going to be interviewing someone every single week that can demonstrate experience in one or more of these areas. So I'm going to talk to recruitment founders and also some experts from outside the industry who can deep dive into things like relationships and health and well-being. So sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoy today's show. Hello and welcome to another episode of the RAG Podcast and today we are um, still in March 2022 um, and uh, the market is still booming. We are still, we're still seeing really positive signs across the industry despite some of the most uh, devastating news across um, Eastern Europe. We are still seeing record um, highs across the recruitment sector, lots of busy clients, lots of busy markets, which is super positive. Today, um, I'm well excited to be joined by Adrian Carboni. Um, Adrian is the founder and CEO of a business called Mazento, a specialist technology recruitment agency headquartered in London, opening up in Germany, 25 staff on a, on a really nice high trajectory growth plan. Um, Adrian and I met late last year in London. Um, he's now joined our academy program, which I'm excited about. Um, but he's someone who I, I just instantly clicked with. I loved it. I loved his story. Adrian was a massive biller. He was like a 1.5 million pound biller in the SAP market who had um, shares in the organization he worked for, didn't really um, have the plan to leave and, and thought he'd make um, his seven figure fund from, from being there at the end when the, when the business finally went through further um, events. But for a number of reasons, which we talk about, Adrian made the decision to partner with a with a colleague and, and open up um, Mazento, and that was five years ago, same time as when I started. Um, and over that period of time, he's he's grown, he's made mistakes, he's been very honest, um, but he he comes across to me as a very mindful, very thankful person um, who um, has given a lot of value back. So I think anyone who's thinking about starting a business, this is someone who's five years in and has added you know, has managed to get to where they wanted to be at this point um, without, you know, hiding from the pandemic and all the things that have happened. So it's a really raw but um, interesting, detailed story that I think will inspire the next generation. Right. Without further ado, Adrian, welcome to the RAG podcast. Thank you very much. It's great to be here, Sean. Uh, you know, having met you and heard a few of the RAG podcasts, it's, uh, it's pretty exciting to be here. Mm. You did actually say to me in the past, like, when's my fucking invite? Do you remember? <laughs> yeah. cool. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say I've got like one arm behind my back right now. No, I've been, no I'm joking. I'm joking. No, I'm, we, we had a really good time in London at Christmas. And um, and yeah, so I'm, I'm excited to, to find out more about your story. Tell us, for those that don't know you, just give us the quick, you know, 30 second overview of who you are and what you do. So uh, I'm the founder and CEO of Macento Group, which is a, a, a technology staffing business with three divisions, yeah. uh, which has got the executive search business, Macento Search, uh, Macento DNA, which does uh, data and analytics. It's quite a broad spectrum uh, that, that we cover within that, that division. And, uh, and of course, SAP, um, a division which, which is my past having done SAP recruitment for about 22 years now. Um, it's, wow. uh, it's, it's, yes, a long time. I know I don't look old enough. I know, mate. You don't. Of hair, of course. Um, but uh, yeah, no, it's been an in incredible journey and, uh, you know, very, very privileged to, to be in the position that, that we're in as a business and, and the people that we have in it. So how big is the company right now? So we are 25 people um turning over in excess of 15 million and um you know we've been going for five years 
and we're just about to launch our German German business. Wow. And um, it would probably be at least 10 to 15 people bigger than that um, if if we had the right footfall of, of the right people coming through the door to interview and hire. Yeah, um, the age old challenge. Oh, mate, you know, when, 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 you know, something you say uh, in your introduction about this podcast is, you know, that in the trenches of growth and, uh, and that really resonates with me because, um, you know, look, whilst we're in a fantastic position and, you know, we're a really profitable business, a really well run, uh, slick business, you know, again, we are very much feel like we're in the trenches of, of not being able to get enough manpower to service um uh, well we're servicing our clients fantastically but we could be doing so much more yeah and it's that really and especially i think the last year has been almost teasing the industry hasn't it because you can see in front of you the opportunity that's there and clients are saying look we've got this work yet you you know you can't grow quick enough and have the embedded talent in your business that are experienced enough to to, to capitalize on it and, and look you're not the only one feeling that i think it's about it's about it, finding some enjoyment in the journey and trying to, and just accepting that there's the stages to it. And I want to talk about that. Let's go backwards though, Adrian. So yeah. 22 years in recruitment. I don't want to, this show is not about like being a, a desk recruiter, but I am interested to know, like, was, how did you get into the, the industry 22 years ago? What was the story well, there? Total accident, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, like I don't think anyone leaves school. No. Uh, thinking, I want to be a recruiter, no. um, but I wish someone had told me about it. Maybe so, um, but, but yeah, no, my, 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 my brothers are builders. They were doing a project in a company in Watford and the car park was full of Lamborghinis and Ferraris and, and all sorts. And they were like, what do you do here? Yeah. And, and, and to, to the, the company PA and she was like, SAP recruitment, IT recruitment. And they were like, my little brother could do this. And so <laughs> they got me an interview and, um, and I met all the nine people that worked in the company in my interview process. And that was mainly because they thought I was hilarious because I was this 18 year old mega enthusiastic guy that was kind of frothing at the mouth to get an opportunity in this company. <laughs> and, uh, and they were all coming out the interview going, you've got to see this guy. You've got to go and see this guy. <laughs> I could actually imagine you at 18. <laughs> totally. Spiky and, black hair and just chatting. <laughs> yeah, three piece suit. Yeah. And, uh, and the, the CEO came in and he was, you know, this guy called Chris Holcroft, who was one of the most inspirational guys I've ever met. Sadly, he's no longer with us. Oh, sorry. Um, and um, he he was sat there. He's got tattoos on his hands and Rolex watch on, leaning over the desk. Yeah. And he's like a bulldog guy. And uh, the cocky 18-year-old that, that I was, uh, you know, he said, where do you want to be in, uh, in three years' time? And I went, sat on that side of the desk wearing your watch. <laughs> <laughs> that was enough. Job, got the job. Sign it there. Yeah, totally, totally got the job. <laughs> um, um, but I, you know what? I, I spent a couple of years in, in delivery and learnt the trade and had some great, great teachers uh, um, um, in, the, in the trade. And, you know, everyone wanted me working their jobs. And then, uh, and then moved into sales and, and didn't look back. I bet you were like me, where you probably knew fuck all, but you were good on the phone at just chatting. Like, I remember I was sat in Australia and this guy, Nick King, I hope he's listening. He probably isn't, but anyway. Um, and he sat opposite me in this office, right? And I'm talking, it must be day three. I'm shitting myself on the phone, but I found it really natural to just talk about my life, what I'm up to, ask really ridiculous questions, and he just started laughing. I remember I'd not said anything funny, right? So as I put this phone call down with this like app developer or something, I just turned around and I was like, what are you laughing at? He goes, he said, mate, he said, you talk shit. <laughs> he said, but I think you're going to be great at this job. <laughs> um, and I was like, why? And he's like, he's like, he basically just said, you don't know anything, but you're fearless and you're still, you're still having rapport with these really technical people. That, and I think in my third week, I found this, guy who ended up with like a thirty thousand dollar fee i didn't get anything i think i got a bottle of wine for it um yeah. passed it on to someone but he's like i got a, i built a rapport with a 40 year old it director and i knew jack shit and i imagine you'd have been quite similar to that 
it was it was exactly the same it was absolutely hilarious but i mean that that business that experience in in watford was was just the best possible grounding you know think of the the companies that have come out of that place what and, was the company uh, that you worked for it was a company called it link that IT -Link. sold to modis right and then right. Out, out of that company red commerce was born and that's you know uh, the, the guys started red commerce and then i you know, they, they offered me the opportunity to start right at the beginning. And I was like, no, I hadn't, I hadn't done what I set out to do in, in IT link. Um, and I, I landed this client in Finland and placed like 23 people in there earning like 1100 quid a day. It was mental. Wow. And, um, and this was, this was back, back then, you know, it was such a, an amazing amount of when money. You joined Red. When did you join Red? That would have been in, I think, 19... No, that would have been... It would have been 2003, I think. Right. And um, you were there for a while, weren't you? You were there for... 15 four. years. Yeah. I was the seventh employee uh, in at Red. And then I left there as the MD responsible for the largest part of the, the company, the largest book, part of the book. Um, and there was about 65, 70 people in that, in that team. How big was the business overall? Um, oh God, I mean, we must have been doing 70, 80 million quid revenue at the time. Yeah. How it many was, staff? Uh, it was 110 people overall. And I think we had, yeah, 60, 60 plus of them. Wow. So um, what made you, what made you, because you didn't start it on your own either. Why, what made you make the decision or when, can you remember the moment where you decided, actually, I'm going to do this for myself? Can you remember that? I, I, I can absolutely remember it. And, um, you know, g going back, look, I, I, I had one of the most amazing times of my life at, at Red. You know, I was, you know, top filler on a number of occasions and, you know, built in excess of 1.5, 1.6 million. You know, I got to 72 contractors out at my peak, which I know people have beaten since. Um, serious money. That's serious it's, it's money. Serious. What, did you, what did you make take home in your oh. Gross pay in your biggest year in, in as an agency recruiter. Well, I guess not not including you know the the the, the buyouts that I went through. Um, it was definitely in excess of you know three three fifty. Wow. So yeah. as, a, as an employee, that is it is serious money in it. Like, it's serious it's, money. Yeah. I spent, <laughs> <it>. <laughs> I spent it all. You it, had I had great the day. best time of my life. It was amazing. Um, but, but and, and people used to say I was like, you know, red through and through. And, you know, I was kind of like the poster boy because I, you know, started the business so early in, started in the business so early on. And, um, you know, worked through the ranks, you know, had every kind of role in the, in the business and, uh, and then was MD. And, and, I, and I guess I remember the day that, it, that it, you know, I fell out of love was the, just the fact that, you know, my then boss, you know, was making decisions that I didn't believe were going to deal deliver a third sale. Yeah, and I felt that you know there there the, the, the were things going on in the business that weren't being addressed. Um, when our part of the business, and I say ours, and that's Mark and Mark Hodges and and mine, who who's my current you know business partner um um you know people were tinkering with our part when we were delivering year on year growth and hitting the number um whereas there were so many broken parts of the business that weren't being addressed and people were like you know putting their head in the sand about it and we, it's just like this is never going to happen yeah it's never going to happen so you know we you know mark always said you know because i brought him into the company 12 years ago introduced him to red and he always said if you go i go and uh, we literally made this snap decision within like hours of having this conversation about this just isn't right anymore. Um, and we hadn't decided and, you know, contrary to popular belief that, that we were going to go and start a business. This was such a significant life choice that it was just more about. What you, you know, what were you walking away from if they had a soul? Were you talking about, again, big money for you personally? I definitely think it would have been, um, you know, if, if they were going to achieve the number that we were talking about, just short of a million quid. So quite a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which yeah. is which is which is a hell of a lot of money. Um, 
yeah, in and around that. That's that's gross, obviously. Um, but yeah, you know, I, it, it was a, a, a life's work. <laughs> you Did know? you have to like tell your wife and that you were probably going to walk away from this opportunity that you built so long to get, you know, be at the table for? Did Was that a conversation? Yeah, definitely. And um, yeah, look, she's incredible and always knows that, you know, I've got it covered and, and always knows that whatever I put my mind to, I will, I will achieve um, and, and do, you know, and because she's seen, she's seen the determination in me and, and, you know, my drive uh, and ambition. So she knows that whatever I choose to do, I will do it to 110% of my uh, ability and apply myself. Um, Where do you think that comes from? Where do you get that drive from? That's a really, I mean, I think, I think it's all your, your parents, you know, I, you know, my, my family, you know, my, my, my parents were absolute grafters, but you know, never, never. They were, made. They were Italian immigrants, right? They came over from Italy. my father. My father was, my mum's English. Right. Um, and, uh, and then, you know, I spent the early part of my life in Italy growing up, they ran a bar and then we came back uh, with, with, with nothing and just grafters, just proper grafters. And they just instilled that, you know, you work hard enough at anything and it will happen. I just want to mention our sponsors today. Um, obviously, Vincere, who are literally all over the market right now. Um, the CRM system of choice for so many new recruitment businesses and existing recruitment businesses out there. They have got a playbook, which is um, a, a, a booklet that you can download, which gives you the information that can help you structure your CRM and everything from um, how you should build ROI into your CRM, how to assemble your CRM, looking at compliance, security, um, understanding different um, integrations and things that you should. It's effectively giving you the, 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 the knowledge to, to decide how you structure your CRM for the long-term growth of your recruitment business. If you would like it, click the link that's attached to this episode and download it. It's free. If you'd like to talk to them, Go to vincere.io forward slash rag. That's V-I-N-C-E-R-E dot I-O forward slash rag. Book a demo. You get an exclusive deal being a rag listener. See, I would say my parents were grafters in a different way, though. It was more like there was no, like, light at the end of the tunnel for them. Like, my mum was a driving instructor. My stepdad drove a truck. Before that, my mum worked as a, in, in spa and, you know, sandwich shop. They always made enough money to live. We didn't yeah. have a, we weren't poor, but we weren't, we had no disposable income really. But you know, the classic working class people that just, but they had, they, they had no knowledge or aspiration or thoughts that there was another version of life. Like it was like this is, whereas I know other people's families, like their parents were entrepreneurial and they thought about building business. I didn't see any of that. And that's sometimes why I wonder where the fuck did I get it from? Because I had no one in my circle that I could lean on that was doing well. Like I remember thinking teachers were loaded. They were rich. They were, they were, that was in my head. Teachers are yeah. so wealthy that that's probably why I ended up becoming a teacher. It's not, it's mad. Um, did, was your parent, was your dad entrepreneurial then? Was he, did he have that? Um, flag? No, I think it was probably my mum actually. She, mm. she was a seamstress and, you know, dressmaker, but, but she was really creative and always, managed to make money not not a, a great deal but I, I think she just instilled in us that you know things cost money if you like the finer things in life you've got to work for them nothing comes to you for nothing and um you know just just seeing the work ethic really rubbed off on me I, I, I wouldn't say I was ever the best recruiter out there or the smartest person out there I was definitely the person that was prepared to work yeah. I think if you did 1.7 million or 1.5 million a year, you're you're up there with one of the best recruiters. Like you're in the top percentage of recruiters. There's no doubt, right? Um, so let's go back to where that moment you've 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 had the chat yeah. at home or whatever. You and Mark decide like it's going to happen. What did you then? How how did that process unfold? It was it was it was all so fast. It was just we checked out more yeah, yeah we, we, we've not we've not we're not scheming there's nothing like that going on we have just checked out and this is such a big life decision that it needs to be dealt with and addressed now and then we'll work out what goes on later later down the line so so we um we handed in our notice we said this isn't a negotiation this isn't a you know 
anything anything at all this is just over thank you very much amazing time good luck your problem now not ours and um they, did they make you work did they make you work a day or did you, they, they, they basically flew the board in uh that night from scotland um you know had everybody in the boardroom with us saying you know tell us why it's like to be honest you know why it's in all of the board minutes that we've had for the last six months we've said it all but you know, no one's dealing with any of it um and and this isn't a negotiation this is just a goodbye yeah. no 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 give us an opportunity to address your you know your your problems or what you've got an issue with over the next four weeks and if we can't solve it we'll accept your notice period so we were like no all right yeah okay fine you, you have the conversation and really that was more than anything it was it was i think a ploy to try and divide and conquer it was it was a ploy to try and you know div divide us and and get one of us in a room and try and retain one of us yeah yeah um which didn't happen anyway you know we handed in our notice we went to the pub the color drained out of our face because we were like we've just left amazing jobs <laughs> <laughs> i remember that i remember and amazing careers and um you know it was like what, what have we done but we we agreed that we weren't going to make any snap decisions and and actually we went away took our families away and we, we all my family and i went off to sri lanka for christmas which was amazing and came back and we, we sat in a hotel in january and and sat down and said right we're going to do this and uh and and we we shook hands and, and mark and i agreed to to start the Sento. and where did the name come from always the hardest part right <laughs> <laughs> it's always the hardest part actually so sento means to listen and to feel in italian right yeah your sento and uh and then the m and a is mark and adrian so my sento i um, like it I mean, it sounds yeah. very italian doesn't it? it sounds italian yeah i think it does yeah no i guess i guess we like something that's a bit not just screaming out we are a recruitment company yeah yeah but it sounds like a consultancy type business and a bit like hoxo it was a made-up word but it took so long to get there it's so annoying but once you get it you know you're like yeah i'm stuck with this one so th tell us about the, the business how did that first year go because you're obviously really good billers had you been managing in the last few years before had you had you been on the tools no that right. was my i think that was one of the reasons i didn't go into recruitment in the end was because i'd, I'd been so far removed from that day to day i, I don't know if i was that keen on going back if i'm honest um yeah. how did you find it like painting the picture of the environment what it looked like how you felt at the beginning of your journey yeah yeah really good uh question and uh always funny to to think about it really so we we, we borrowed a couple of desks in my mate's um um agency in which is a creative agency and yeah. uh, uh, in in Old Street and uh, borrowed a couple of desks in his office and uh, which was really good fun and that's cool if you got people around you as well right yeah totally it wasn't just Mark and I it was yeah. it was you know an environment that 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 he had um, that that we borrowed these desks in and we just started plugging away actually do you know what because we couldn't touch SAP for a year because of our covenants yeah. which we yeah. took totally seriously we took by the letter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we basically had to go into data and analytics, which was like learning a brand new language. You know, we had to learn what Hive Pig, Spark, Scala meant and what data engineers and what data no, scientists no. do. And it was fascinating and, and, you know, a real challenge. But we built a database of these people. We were just, you know, obviously down. Did you find it difficult school. going back? Did you find it hard going back to candidate calls and just the old school, like what you'd learn, you trade on, but you'd probably not been doing for a long time? To be honest with you, Sean, because it was a needs must and it was exciting and it was like, look, you know, we paid ourselves 11 grand each in the first year, right? Yeah, yeah. And we were used to earning, you know, a lot of money, right? So it was a case of we've got to make this work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we've got to make this work and we took some investment but we didn't we didn't spend it we never spent the investment that we took um but yeah no it was it was it was it was buzzing it was exciting it was great to get out there and 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 do something different after such a long time of doing sap uh and being brainwashed by it and um and you know really fortunately uh an old old client reached out and said 
is what you're doing related to red? And I was like, no. And he went, good, because, you know, I don't need SAP people. I need, I need data people. And um, he introduced me to this company that he was working for. And, um, you know, very, very quickly, we got up to like 30, 40 contractors working in, wow. in the company. We became their sole supplier in, in the, the first year, which was like, you know, can't, can't believe it, you know. And actually, you know, Mark, 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 you know, that will not mind me saying he was he was struggling, at enjoying the BD and he wasn't getting as as uh, the, he didn't get the rub of the green immediately. But we always knew that I was the more salesy front of house guy and, and Mark was definitely always going to play much more to his strengths around you know being more operational yeah and thank god because he is all you need that though you need <sighs> that you need that that balance like me and Amma, Amma does is a salesperson ex recruiter and he still sells but he's still way more operational than me i'm i'm shit with that stuff if i'm honest like i'm just i'm better on camera and in meetings and inspiring stories communicating messages but you get me looking at spreadsheets of you know operational improvements i'm, I'm just not your guy <laughs> and yeah. it's, but at the beginning you've kind of got to do anything and then and then it and then it start as you get a bit bigger it starts to naturally go that way i imagine exactly that exactly that so you know we we, we got to the stage where you know we were straight into a we work um that was you know the the size of a broom cupboard uh mm -hmm. and you know we were practically sat on each other's laps with a couple of employees and um, when did you start hiring then? How soon did you start? Because I imagine the invest was the investment for that, or was it for just protection? It, it was for that, but again, we just because we ended up getting a load of contractors placed, we just never we never spent that investment. Yeah. Um, but we yeah, so we we started hiring I think in month four. Right. Um, and um, you know we we hired a delivery guy and a couple of salespeople. And uh, and we moved, and, then, and you know, and then another couple, um, and we we moved around in WeWorks. You know, we were always the first into a new building and got fair, good deals and everything. And you know, we we just slowly grew uh, across WeWork offices, and um, and then obviously, you know, what was it, year two or three, the pandemic hit. <laughs> Right. And get, we'll get to that in a sec. So you were growing nicely, yeah. And I mean, WeWork's a really interesting concept, isn't it? Like it's uh, when we started it in recruitment, it didn't exist, and then it became this. If you go now, it's still full of recruiters. Like, and I, no. I've, just, I've actually just took an office space. It's mad because five years later, I feel like the broom cupboard. I've just took my own office space in Sheffield, where I where I live now. Yeah. Um, and it's just for me, right? And it's it's two man office, but it's in like a mini we. It's not we work, but it is. Mm. Um, and uh, when I when I was signing up, I said, you know, tell me about the type of people that are in here. And there's ten recruitment companies in this little place. <laughs> I was like, they're fucking everywhere. Um, <laughs> but I'm, I'm I love that. I think it's great. And it, the flexibility that it provides you mm. to to grow and move. You know, we, we wouldn't have had that. You would have had to take a big long lease 10, 15 years no. ago. Yeah. You'd have to lock yourself in for shit. So it's it allows that flexibility. Did you did you know what type of business you wanted to create at the beginning? Did you two draw it out like this is the end game? Like what what was the vision back then? Do you think? Yeah, no, we've we've always been um, you know really really aligned on on you know the end goal, but what is the the day to day focus? Yeah, to, that's that's going to achieve that. You know. And and look, the end goal is is you know like like I'm sure a lot of people in recruitment you know they they want to sail off into the sunset and leave a fantastic business and legacy like like Red is today you know it's a it's a a, a, a renowned uh, uh, organisation we want to build a business that that has you know stands for quality that delivers um, that people are proud to work for and and that clients are proud to work with. You know, yeah. and then that's a, a market leader in all three of our businesses. Um, and and you know, I think if we do, if if we come in to deliver that environment every day that that people are proud to work for and and enjoying themselves, and we have a laugh and we have a great time, and you know, we we nurture and support people. It's not a 
you know, beating people over the head with KPIs. It, I will never have a business like that. Um, but it is it is helping people to develop to do a good job mm-hmm. and understand what they're doing and how to do it well. Um, but yeah, the, the end goal, the, the the end vision is, you know, we'd, we'd like to sell the business to, you know, a private equity firm or a trade sale and, and, and you know, ca- cash in a, a check and... Well- did you have a did you already know it was going to be a head count like did you have like a hundred heads like red or did you have like a, a, a target in that respect because that's usually where recruitment companies kind of line like line their 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 their, their goals is around the people yeah. numbers yeah 100 percent. i think i think we're looking at sort of probably 50 people um uh, that but but i think it's really important that our goal is is just to have a really highly profitable business yeah yeah and and you know when we look at the metrics that exist out there in the marketplace you know i believe that at 25 headcount out we're already you know in the top percentile of those metrics in terms of what you know per head gp or per head billing represents you know i think we're, we're we're we really drive people to get higher than industry average what do you what do you think the industry average is well i think i think on perm they say it's like 150k is like the industry average and i think on contract it's around sort of you know 300 300 and let's say 3 350 on on contract you know but but for for us you know it's it's about having 250 300 perm billers and having you know 500 to, to 750 if not beyond there's always outliers but you know helping people achieve a million quid you know that's that's the one yeah. you know that's 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 what we want to cultivate in the business and have a culture that that believes that if they do all of these things that we're teaching them consistently they can do it pre-pandemic What's the biggest mistakes you think you made? Like, where did you get it wrong in the first couple of years? Looking back now, hindsight is that kind of 2020 vision of everything's easier in hindsight. But if you look back, what, what do you think you did get wrong and would perhaps change in, if you did it again? Um, I think, I think, um, look, I, I, we really, I really need some leadership, more leadership in the business. Mm. I love a, a, a person to come in and, and and run the contract business um, on 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 SAP and DNA and just be the the sort of sales director or, or MD in that space um, because I, I guess I'm kind of you know doing a lot of that at the moment and and that just means I'm stretched too thinly. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so so I'd I'd love some more some more leadership. Um, to, to so would you say with- going back then, if you look back at the first the formative years of the business was that a priority leadership or was it is that maybe what you missed out early on yeah i i think having another um you know sales manager type person in the business two years ago because now today they'd be two years on and be able to you know scale faster yeah, yeah. what do you um, think stops what do you think stops because you're not the first person to say that to me yeah. what do you think stops the mindset around that in the early days. Why don't people? Do you know what? The, 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 there's probably two things. You know, two thing. The first is you probably want to do it all yourself, yeah. <laughs> wrongly, um, and uh, and you know the the second thing is it, it wasn't for want of trying. We we definitely did right. interview right. plenty of leaders and managers and and stuff like that, um, and and we offered a few people, but just you know didn't 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 get people across the line in in some instances yeah so going into the pandemic what did the business look like on march 2020 well yeah it was a bit squeaky bum time to be honest uh you know there was a moment where we were looking at each other thinking have we just done three years and it's it's all going to go to i remember that exact feeling i mean we're the same we're five years old and it's exactly the same feeling it was like and we'd had a record in Feb as well. Like it was a wicked month. And I was like, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> yeah, no, we were, we were sailing high, you know, at that point. We were at the the, the biggest we'd been, you know, in terms of to run a book and, and deals. Um, and um, and all of a sudden, you know, we got clobbered by IR35. We got clobbered by 
um, um, a, a, a big a couple of projects finishing a bit earlier I think probably because of the, the pandemic mm. um, and um, yeah and a, and a few offers retracted so so our book shrank significantly um, and we made a decision at that point you know were we gonna were we gonna get rid of people and and scale back or were we gonna batten down the hatches and really focus on you know development training you know we we engaged a high performance coach that the whole business went on for three months wow. which was a super inspiring project a guy called uh, jp jean pierre de Villiers, great guy um and uh, and we did that we we battened down the hatches you know we were doing sending everyone cocktails uh to make at home you know we were sending out bar menus where everyone had to cook what was on the menu at yeah. home and getting all online and doing it together and quizzes and we, we would you know there'd be moments where we'd get super drunk on these quizzes and have a right <laughs> <laughs> we'd all be rolling around it would be well funny yeah. but yeah we, we we had a we had a great time you know as hard as it was you know from a mental health perspective for some people you know, when, when things got really tough, we went and met people in parks and went for walks and just made sure that they felt supported. So, yeah, would you say, if you could go and erase that period of your, of your business, if you could say COVID never happened and you, the trajectory you were on, yeah, what decision, would you get rid of it or would you no. hold on to it? No. As, as, as awful as it was for lots of people, the pandemic, and obviously there were lives lost and, you know, and, and some people, you know, from a mental health perspective, uh, uh, are not as in a, in a good a place. <laughs> I I'm thankful because I got to spend so much more time with my family. I, I, yeah. I got to see my kids grow up, which I'd sacrificed a lot of that for for my career, um, and that was an amazing experience. And I think they're better for it too. Um, I, I think we will always, we'll never go back to a five day a week in the office, which again, I don't think there's anyone in their right mind that, that isn't thankful for. Um, and, and yeah, there's definitely some massive lessons that we learned about trust as well. You know, I guess I always trusted the team, right? But actually you're thrust into those situations and all of a sudden, you know, they, they, they live up to that trust. And, you know, we've got an incredible bunch of, of people, all ages, um, all, all different backgrounds, et cetera, but they're brilliant. And, and you know, they've, they've shown that they care about the job that they do and wanting to be successful as well as the business that they work for. You know what? I think um, I think you've nailed it there. Like the, the thing about our sector before the pandemic was it wasn't that we didn't trust people, but we were drilled a certain way. Like. Mm. The amount of conversations in offices when people worked from home and people were like bullshit, um, yeah, yeah, or you know, you you had to go to a doctor's appointment or anything that took you away from <clears throat> the standard day would be frowned upon, and that was industry standard. Like that's not just your background; it's mine and everyone else's who listens to this show that will remember those moments where I remember being at the end of my time at Venquist and I was billing, you know. I, I was bill. My team was doing a third of the business revenue, and I was the top biller since the day I'd started. And I'd never had a sick day ever. And I don't think you could trust anyone more than me at this point, right? And I'd just moved house, and I was waiting on shit being delivered. I bought my first house, and I remember working from home. Um, I probably must have done about five days over three weeks. Um, but the atmosphere when I came back from the people above was definitely different. Like it was like, oh, here he is. Swanning in again. Uh, what have you had delivered this time? And I'm like, as if I was bullshitting, like as if I was making it up. And I, you yeah. know what? I've still got a great relationship with them. And I don't blame them because I believe I would have been the same had I let my team go at that point. That was just the culture we were. Uh, that, yeah, we no, were, uh, yeah, we were all raised in that way and bred uh, in and re multiplied that way. And yeah. then, so to be thankful, one of the biggest things to be thankful for is, is hopefully. I know loads of recruitment companies, by the way, that have gone back to five days a week and Monday and they're still flying and, they, and they've and they not changed. But on yeah. the whole, it's fucking dramatic how much it's changed on the whole across the sector. Yeah, yeah de de definitely. And uh, and completely agree with you, you know, from a cultural perspective, you know, you'd, you'd, you'd literally, 
you know, you'd yeah. shout half day when people were leaving at, you know, six yeah. o'clock and stuff. Part time, like part time, and all that. What, 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 what are we doing? And, uh, and, and but, but it was, it was just a, a moment in time, and, and the world evolves. Do you know what I mean? And, and, and so does business. And again, you know, I think as, as we've said to the team, look, you know, it's, it's two, three days in the office until everything's going really badly. So let's not let it go badly. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. But, How do you make that happen now? Have you got a structure to it? Um, everyone tries to be in the office on a Tuesday and a Thursday. Right. Um, predominantly, obviously, there's always a bit of flexibility around that if people need to, to wait in for stuff or, or get stuff done. But yeah, Tuesdays and Thursdays tend to be the days that everyone gets in. And then sometimes there'll be events or directors clubs or, or specific training that people need to attend that, that, that we're having delivered in, in person. I just want to mention our sponsors today, District 4. Um, you know, a lot of people say that they don't feel like um, they're surrounded by peers that are pushing them. That are, There's a lot of people that get, like Adrian, perhaps in, in his career, got to a point where you're not, you've stopped learning, you know, and, you, and you're probably in an environment where you're either on your own in business and you're not learning because you've got no colleagues or you've, you've eclipsed people in the business you work for and, you, and you're not being pushed. But imagine working alongside other experienced recruiters who can really collaborate with you at the same level. You know, if you're thinking uh, of a change, check out District 4 because they will allow you to either launch your business or take your business to the next level by surrounding you with people at the same point in their journey, the same level of knowledge and intelligence that can push each other and people that are going to be beyond you as well. So look at district4.io forward slash hoxo and find out what they can do for you. I think I've realized I love variety, but I also love structure. So a weird thing, like even now, like, so my routine now is I'm up, I'm out, I'm exercising. I work from home in the morning. And then now I've took the office. I'll be working in the afternoon in the office. Um, I'm going to have the same setup in both environments. So I'll have, you know, the same lights and microphones. And it, I want it to be feel like I can just plug in, plug out. But the mm. thought of getting out the house in the afternoon, it's that little bit of variety that I'm craving. Yeah. Um, I could equally do my job here, but the thought of having those two, I don't know. It's, it, I just think when we were locked down and we, we didn't have any variety, it made us realize actually previously we also had no variety because we were locked in, in the yeah. office. So it's like, it's having that, that balance, isn't it? Um, what, one thing I've got, one question I've got for you and I've never asked this really, and I don't know why. I remember when we sat in the office in London and you taught, you were telling me about the stories of you sat in Leicester Square as a big biller, like laughing your head off, having a drink till whatever time, just having the best time of your life in London, right? Yeah. How, I guess, how much of that are you trying to recreate in your team? And how much of that are you also, I suppose, do you still want to be a part of? And, and how do you, I guess what I'm trying to say is, how do you find the balance between being the CEO mm but also still wanting to be a part of those things because mm. I've, I've always found that quite tricky really. Like sometimes I can be so comfortable and, and at the level of others that I forget that I've got a responsibility to be the owner. I don't know. Mm. Do you ever feel like that? Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, definitely. Look, I'm also a lot older than back then. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it as much as I used to. You know what I, mean? I, I can't do it half as much. Um, yeah, I think I think as a as a business, we again we've got a really res respectful bunch of people, and and I, and I think what's also changed is is again the culture around recruitment isn't all about out every night and no. and you know tearing it up, and and again you know one thing I was really proud of through lockdown was that you know we engaged this coach, and and you know some of the the people in the team were talking about you know how do we become more disciplined around our lives because you know going out for a beer turns into 10 and you know all, all of a sudden you know they're, they're just feeling crap for the rest of the week and that they recognize that's not good for what they want to achieve in business yeah and um you know what I, what i was proud of is that they these are the same people that have now changed their lives and they're climbing kilimanjaro or they're going and signing up to spartan races and they're, yeah. they're challenging themselves physically because 
look, you know, we, we've all we've all gone out on the piss and you know have and and I think they're really enjoyable if you're not doing it all the time. Yeah, and and I, and I think you know I love doing it and dipping in and having a great time. But the fact that it's not every week makes it that much more fun. If everyone's yeah. saying telling the same stories at the bar every Thursday night, pissed. Yeah, you've heard it all before. Yeah, 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 yeah. nothing yeah. new to hear. And I no, think I like, the culture in the business is definitely a bit more mature. You know, <laughs> and I, I probably don't get invited to to all of the socials, which which I'm fine with. Um, um, but you know, when we do go out, we go out, we have a brilliant time, we hit it hard. Um, but it's just not an every week occasion. But you know, yeah, be, being able to step back, I, I haven't got a problem with either. You know, we went skiing the other day, and they were all out till you know four a.m. and five a.m. and uh, you know, terrible state in the morning. I was quite happy leaving them to it in the club. Yeah, yeah. What What do you think is the hardest thing about being you? in this role like because i think it's very easy on this show to promote the positives and make yeah. it fucking sound like a, you know everyone's going to make millions and it's it's brilliant and all you do is you leave your job you start a business and that's it be honest like what what's yeah. what, what parts of this job are fucking hard and and moments you think why the fuck do i do this yeah definitely i i, I think um look I, th I think i think it just i've only you know, I've kind of been doing the job of, of CEO, but I've only just become the CEO. And, you know, that, that definitely gave me some sleepless nights thinking, oh, I've got to be this different person. I've got to, you know, what does what does a CEO do? But actually, you know, I'm doing a lot of what the CEO does. And, and you know, you've got to avoid having the imposter syndrome of, you know, am I, am I right for this? Yeah. But, but you know, I'm... I, my passion is giving people an environment in which to succeed in. You know, that that's that's what I'm passionate about. And seeing people succeed in that is 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 gives me as much of a buzz as I ever got out of, you know, billing and in hitting great numbers, etc. It's it's as much above, if not more, yeah, seeing other people succeed. So I think definitely, you know, the the imposter syndrome I've 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 definitely experienced. And thinking, right, you know, am, am I am I the right person for it? And I, I am the right person for it right now. And 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 that's not to say that in future I I don't hire a, a CEO to run the business and take it to the next level. Yeah. Um. And also, I, I guess what's hard is, I think sometimes, um, yeah, sometimes I, I I probably need to be probably a bit harder. You know, on 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 people, I'm I'm very easygoing. I I, I don't want to have to tell people that they need to work harder. That's that's boring. You know, yeah, I want to I want to work on. I want to jump on client calls with them. I want to, you know, help them work out how to, you know, win business out of a specific client or what's the right strategy to open up a you know FTSE business or a global organization. What is it? help them understand a need and a demand or how a project works. That's the, the interesting stuff. But I think sometimes I'm, I'm probably a bit too relaxed and need to be a bit harder. And, and I'm, and that's not my natural. No, I, I think I'm very similar in that respect. Like you can kind of lean into the things you're good at and you enjoy, but you got to remember the business needs other things. And it's, yeah, I think, I think a lot of people, go through that when they're in, in the in the growing of a business like you naturally you know you can leave it to other people if you if, if that's a better skill set but there's times where you have to make that difficult decision or Definitely. you know swallow it swallow your pride and do something that you didn't want to do um what what's your how has your life changed outside of work as a result of the last five years i imagine you had a great life you had a growing family, you had money at Red and everything, but now you're the business owner. You said pre-pandemic, you sacrificed a lot. Yeah. So what, how would you describe it now? Like, and, and what, what has being a business owner enabled you to be able to do and shape and, and provide? Yeah. I mean, I think, I think there is a misconception when you've got a successful business that you're just taking every penny out of it. Right. Which we are not, you know, I, I, I've I've definitely felt I've I've had more money. Than I <laughs> yeah, I have as well. Yeah. <laughs> but, but that's because 
we're completely committed to investing in the growth of the business yeah mm. and and you know managing cash flow is 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 something that perhaps a salesperson hasn't had to ever think about and mm. making sure that you know we're, we're we're always giving the the money the 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 business the opportunity to to grow and not stifle that by taking everything out that's not what we're into we're into the the journey um how has my life you know changed I, again i guess i just am more available having had my own business for my for my kids and and for my 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 family and um you know my wife started going back to work so you know she yeah just just so much more available whereas you know when i was at, at, at red i just wasn't you know i was there at 8 a.m in the morning and i wasn't home before 8 8 p.m at, at night and you know having the flexibility in in my own business yeah it's just just made me more available to them and, and seen them grow up and, and that's a privilege so what would you what would you do in an average week or month that that to like what does that mean you can do or do do as a result of the flexibility well yeah to have dinner with them a couple of times a week which is which is lovely you know get, prepare their breakfast a couple of times a week and 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 see all of that uh school school routine unfold which is a bit yeah. stressful <laughs> um, um but but yeah, just just see how they're developing and and see the funny things that they do and and getting so much more of of that time with them and not just being a weekend dad. Yeah. Um, yeah. Football practice and stuff like that, and on on a Wednesday and and taking into that now and again, which is which is great. And yeah, it's just just much more available, which again is is brilliant and where do you get your personal support or even fun like you've got because you, i think as a ceo as a business leader as a family man as a, as a dad as a husband you're providing all the time right everyone mm -hmm. else is really you're serving everyone but what about you like so where do you have do you have a routine or a process or hobbies or anything that, you, that is all about you and not about serving others do you have anything like that in your life um um look I, I i really enjoy uh i've just signed up for the london marathon i i do oh, enjoy going out for a run and, and listening to to music or good podcasts including yours uh, i i really enjoy you know socializing and going out for dinner or or going out and meeting mates and just being able to have a laugh and not talk about business at all mm. and, and literally just have a laugh um um and that's that's always good fun and and yeah getting getting away on holiday you know having those moments where you can switch off lie in the sun uh which we don't have enough of in this country no. and um and just properly how often you know, do you get away do you think what's the, have you got a plan around that yeah i mean look obviously not loads recently but we, we typically do a, a two to three week holiday in the in the summer um yeah. and, you know i've got a place in sardinia that, yeah. that i go to and that's where we we grew up and that's literally you you, you arrive you know where everything is yeah you, you're arriving at your own place and you're instantly in that mode of relax because oh, you, haven't got anything out. you haven't got to think about anything you just know the drill yeah that's lovely um and then you know we'll try and go away with the with with the lads skiing once a year as well typically which is always good fun uh and a good opportunity just to let loose do you know what i mean i, I think my hobby is letting loose when i yeah. can just yeah. to, to forget about everything yeah because you're so focused and so aware it is about just letting letting the hair down which uh i'm sure you spend a lot of time. <laughs> um i'm planning i'm thinking of growing my hair this year you know, I, I know a lot of people are losing it and I'm I'm lucky enough not to be. I'm going grey as shit, but I'm not losing it. And I'm thinking like, what do you reckon like a David Ginola by the end of the year? <laughs> Go for it, mate. My, my oh, yeah. kids, 10 years Good. old, they both got long hair. I was like, what happened? Yeah, you can still cut it off, right? So I'm thinking I'm going to trial it for a bit. I quite like the short cut and I like the thought of the long cut. I just don't like the thought of anything in between. I'm like, I'm going to like a fucking, I don't know, mushroom head in about two months <laughs> if I do it. So we'll see. <laughs> Going for it. So now that you're five years in, yeah. pandemic hopefully is out the way. It feels like it's out the way, doesn't it? The market's booming. Um, 
what's the, what's in store? Like, what does twenty twenty two look like for you now? What are you trying to what are you trying to do right now? Yeah, growth. Um, you know, it's 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 growth. It's making sure that we are, you know, building out more of the operational infrastructure. So, you know, trying to hire a, a, a senior talent acquisition stroke HR manager um, uh, who we can develop into a HR director and really help them grow their, their, their career in the business. Um, you know, we're bringing on a, a, a finance director. Um, you know, and then and then you know we could we could hire 10, 12 people today. Um, launch the German GmbH, um, and you know again hire into that and have the right leadership. It's all about the right leadership. Um, yeah, and, and promote people into to team lead and, and and practice manager positions over the next you know 12, 18 months. That's that's a massive goal. I love it. What what what. Why is finance director now? What's that going to? Again, it's a. I can see it, but why? What do you think that will do for the business? Well, I think I think we. You know, look, Mark isn't a, a CFO. He's he's not. You know, he's a he's a recruiter that's doing that part of the job incredibly well. Yeah, within the boundaries of what he knows, but yeah. he doesn't know what he doesn't know. Yeah, and and ultimately, you know, you you've got to have people that have got that depth of expertise in the right positions and um you know we we need somebody that's gonna make sure that we get you know structure right and and just make sure that we're always bulletproof and and the foundations are super solid for for whatever scale and growth that we achieve you know we might get to 50 and say let's go to 100 so yeah yeah. 50, 50 is the next the next that's line. The, that's, the, that's the next ladder, the next step on the ladder, isn't it? And that, that is interesting, I think, as founders, we we've got to be prepared that perhaps we might not both want to be on the journey at certain points, you know, like that. Because yeah. you might get to 50 and you might take a big fucking deep breath and go, well done. And then Mark goes, I want to get to 100. Or you do and he doesn't. And that's the sort of thing to think about. But regular communication around this stuff, I found with that with my business partner, you know, we we we're, we're not actually that directly connected at the moment because I run the academy as as you know, you've just joined and hopefully you're enjoying it. I saw you you're on the call yesterday, weren't you? Yeah. You you were very vocal on it. Yeah. Um, and then you've got Amma runs the agency side of our business, which is more of a done for you managed service. Um, so we don't touch daily around that much, other than like big decisions. But then we sit down every couple of weeks and we have a genuine chat about how we feel about where we're going and and it keeps us aligned. Um, I've met a few businesses recently where there's a real obvious disconnect between the founders and what one person wants and one person doesn't. Um, final question, because I'm mindful that, of time, but could you give us three things that you would, if, you, if, if I was a, you know, I'm about to start my business in 2022, I'm, I'm an aspiring owner. Give us three words of wisdom, or three, three, three pieces of advice that you've learned in the last five years that would help someone thrive and uh, and 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 be be the best best boss they can be or best business owner they can be. Well, I think um, I think you know special specialize. You know, I think you you can't be all to everyone. Yeah, mm -hmm. so so have a niche and and go and own it. You know, I think I think people are sometimes daunted by oh well there's there's all these major players out there that own the market space literally no one owns any market space you know there are there are you know gaps and opportunities absolutely everywhere so but 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 have a have a specific area and go and you know be brilliant in it um is is the first thing um don't give up yeah you know you you expect hard times have realistic plans you know the amount of times that we interview people and they say you know we're gonna we're gonna do this in the first year and this in the second year and it's it's great but i think if you are going to go and start a business have that have that goal but work out what what would it look like if if you didn't do all of that you know can you survive are you going to lose your house you know uh, uh, you know if you did you know a third of it what does that look like to you and can you still manage that and and you know is your partner and wife aligned to, to understanding what it could look like if you don't achieve all of your yeah, major yeah. targets 
because you know look it's, there's always well laid plans but you know when does everything go 100 percent to plan yeah. yeah true anything any final one um I, I think i think if you're gonna do it be in business with somebody you know you, you you're absolutely right you've got to you've got to trust them you know you've got to trust them implicitly and that's something i'm so grateful that i have with with mark i absolutely trust him and and the other uh, directors in the business you know we've all known each other for a really long time and having that that trust is is you know helps you sleep at night um you know no one's going to run off with a bank balance you know that's that's pretty important it is um, really yeah, big, really big. Time. I mean, my I'm has been my best mate since we first week of uni. So we know each other since 2004, and yeah, he's like a brother. Like I, and that, that a lot of people find that really difficult to work with. The re, like he's my closest friend, right? But it's mad. I'd say our friendships probably took a step back a little bit because we we have something else that we now share. Um, and sometimes it is nice to go out, especially when there's another mate like. James is our third, is, is probably the third best. We were, we were a three who lived together for years. When we see James, for example, we might talk a bit about Hoxo and he's in recruitment. There's a lot of talk, but we do have moments where, you know, we go back to being just those three kids that lived together and didn't have anything and just chatted shit about what they were trying to do or football or whatever. So, yeah, it's about trust and 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 in, I think and my advice is to enjoy it. Like, just try yeah. and enjoy it. Because I said it at the start, so many people are fixated on this end goal so obsessed with this end goal and growth is can be crippling to people the thought of not capitalizing on the opportunity can be crippling mm. but you might not even have tomorrow like from a life perspective you know look at what's going on in the world in fucking middle east sorry yeah well in the middle east and and eastern europe um plus the pandemic plus you name it there's no guarantees so it's about enjoying i think being a business owner you can forget to enjoy it and when you try and be, when you think gr about gratitude and think, you know what, how lucky are we that we've been able to build something that, you know, provides employment for other people and so services so many, it's pretty cool. I um, think you just hit the nail on the head there, mate. I think that's that's a, a fantastic fourth point, which is you've got to enjoy it. You've got to enjoy the, the journey. You're right, it might all be over tomorrow and, um, you know, can't look back and... and and say, oh, we should have we should have had more of a laugh, or, or no, you... I don't think that by selling a business, that's when you're going to have fun, like because you, everyone I've interviewed on the show who's ever sold says it's it's an anti climax anyway. There's always they always then go, what do I fucking do in my day? <laughs> so um, enjoy it while it's there, and then there'll be something else at the end. I guarantee. Um, Adrian, thank you. It's been a pleasure. I love your honesty. Uh, you know, I love it. I could listen to your stories all day. Tell me. If, if anyone did want to reach out, though, and, and really was it either interested in working for you, of course, but even if they're another founder and they wanted just to bounce ideas or ask you some questions, would you be open to that if someone reached out on LinkedIn? Absolutely. Always welcome that. Absolutely. And um, and, and LinkedIn is definitely the best place to, to find me. Wicked. Well, I'll make sure you're tagged in everything um, that happens. And thank you so much. Let's get you back on again in a year or two and let's find out where you are on that trajectory towards the 50 staff. It'd be a pleasure to, Sean. Nice one, mate. Take care, yeah? Roger, thank you. Thank you, as always, for listening to today's show. I truly, truly hope that you got value from it. That's the only reason I take time every week is to ensure that my audience, future and existing recruitment owners are learning from each other to make this industry that I love so much stronger. Today's episode was brought to you by Hoxo Media. I am the CEO and founder of Hoxo Media, and we are the world's leading content marketing and personal branding agency for recruitment businesses specifically. So we are working with over 200 agencies and 2,000 recruiters right now, both managing the brands, producing content, building written video podcast content for niche recruitment agencies all over the world, as well as coaching at a desk level individual recruiters in your businesses, how to be better on LinkedIn. That's how to brand themselves. That's how to produce content. That's how to use the opportunity on LinkedIn to get traffic to their profiles and turn that into business. We're coaching people all over the world every single day. If any of that sounds of interest, please do visit www.hoxomedia.com or drop me, Sean Anderson, a personal message on LinkedIn. and would love to talk to you. Tune in again next week. That's live on LinkedIn. I'll see you soon.